Hello and welcome back to another Horus Heresy painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint your Space Marines in the colours of the pre-Heresy Space Wolves using Games Workshop's range of paints. So here we have the Space Marine and as you can see I've primed it with a black spray primer and I've also kept the arms separate as well as the bolt just to make life a lot easier. Now the first colour we're actually going to be painting onto this miniature is Mechanica Standard Grey and we're painting this across the entirety of the armour. Now for this step I'm using a uh, kind of a larger brush for this step because we, we don't need to worry too much about overspilling and being neat. Uh, so I'm just going to get this across the entirety of the miniature making sure all the armour is painted and as you can see I've watered it down slightly. Now this is because uh, painting on two thinner coats will always provide a much better coverage than painting on one thick coat. Once the base layer is down, the next step is to apply some highlights. Now first of all, we're going to be doing some uh, highlights using a glaze and we're going to be focusing these on the panels uh, which are at the top of the miniature to simulate lighting. And first we'll be using a Dawnstone mixed in 50-50 quantities with Lamian Medium. For this step you want to focus on the upper edges, you want to imagine that there's a light source coming from above the miniature so all of the top sections will obviously be lighter than the bottom ones. So this mixture is slightly, uh, it's quite dilute so what I'm going to be painting it on, you can see there it creates a very thin coat light So I'm focusing it on the top of this panel here and then once that's dry I'll be building up a second layer and I'll just be painting this anywhere where there is a top panel uh, which kind of would have the light hitting it. Once your highlight is dry, the next step is to wash over the armour and for this we'll be using a mixture of 75% normal oil to 25% Lamian medium. Now for this wash we want to make sure that we are very liberal in our application, make sure it gets into all of the recesses. Now this will work as both a shader in the recesses and also tie in the blending for the, uh, the highlight that we did in the previous step. Now that the wash is dry, the next step is to focus on another highlight. Now this highlight will be mainly on the edges of the armour as opposed to on the panels themselves. And for this we will be using Administratum Grey. This time I'm using my uh, detail brush and I'll be focusing this on the upper edges. So for example, just on the helmet here, I'll just be dr drawing the brush very gently across the top of the bridge there. Just doing the same along these sections at the bottom. I'll just be focusing this on any of the upper sections of the armour, just creating a nice thin edge highlight. With the armour complete we can now start working on cleaning up any of the joint areas. Now this includes uh, sec sections here, you can see in between the armour panels, and also the main stock on the bolter. Now for this we'll be using a bad and black. Now for this step you want to be very careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted and as such I'll be using my small detail brush as you can see here. So once you've finished painting all the black areas again we can now highlight them with Dark Reaper. So as we did for the final highlight on the armour I'll be focusing this highlight onto the very edges of the black areas like so and then I'll just be using my uh, detail brush to achieve this. Now the next step that we'll be focusing on is all of the fur and leather areas. So this includes any fur detailings you've got, for example, on the shoulder here, and also uh, any leather areas such as the back here. Now I'll be painting all of these with a Steel Legion Drab. Now while the Steel Legion Drab is a base paint and it should cover quite nicely, I'd still recommend uh, mixing in a small amount of water or Lamia Medium just to thin down the coat, and apply several thin coats as opposed to one thick one. So I'm just also being quite careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. So now I'm going to be washing over the areas I've just painted with Agrax Earthshade. Now this uh, wash will allow us to add some shading as well as creating some nice definition in the fur areas as you can see here. I'll be applying this wash to any of the fur and also leather areas across the miniature. Once the wash is dry, the next step is to highlight both the fur and the leather areas, and for this we'll be using a Bane Bay Brown. As you can see, I'm using my detail brush here just to pick out some of the raised fur sections like so. And I'll also be using this to run along the edges of any leather pouches that may be on the miniature. Now if you have any uh, flesh areas such as uh, this here on the underside of the hide there, you can paint them with a Rakar Flesh. 
Now, as I always stress when painting base layers, uh, two thin layers are much better than one thick layer. So I've mixed in a small amount of water here just to improve this flow slightly. And once this layer is complete, I'll paint a second layer over the top. Now the next step for tackling the flesh coloured areas is to wash them over with Reichland Flesh Shade. For this step I've mixed in a small amount of water into the washers, I don't want to overpower it too much uh, by having a strong wash, so I'm just going to just a light wash across there just to add a slight amount of shading in which allows to do a highlight in the next step. So for edging the skin areas on the flesh there, I'm just going to be using a flayed one flesh. Now as Flayed One Flesh is an edge paint, we should be able to paint straight out of the pot and as you can see here I'm just going to be focusing this highlight on the very edges of the flesh areas, like so. The next area that we'll be focusing on are the eyes and also you can use the same techniques to, uh, to paint any like top knot areas such as uh, this on the head there. And for this we'll be base coating them with Mephiston Red. So Mephiston Red is a base paint which makes it a lot easier to cover these areas like so, but I've still mixed in a small amount of water. And I'm just going to be quite liberal when applying it to the top knot here. However, when you come to paint the lenses in the eyes, you want to be very, very careful as you don't want to overspill and paint the armor that we've already painted. Once the base layer is dry on both the top knot and the eyes, you can wash both areas with Karaberg Crimson. By washing over the top knot with the Karaberg Crimson, it not only provides some nice shading in the recesses, it also darkens the overall colour which will allow us to do some nicer highlights later on. Now, I'm being quite liberal with the wash as you can see here to make sure that it gets into all of the recesses but when I come to wash the eyes I'll be a lot more careful as I don't want the wash to run over uh, into the helmet. The next paint to use to highlight the top knot on the eyes is Evil Sun Scarlet. When it comes to highlighting the eyes you want to be very very careful and you want to just paint a small line of Evil Sun Scarlet at the base of the lens like so. And once that's done, you can then focus on highlighting the layers, the highlighted strands on the top knot, just like I am here. So the final step for painting the lenses is to apply a small dot of Ceramite White into the top corner of the lenses. So by applying a small dot of Ceramite White into the corner of the lens, just like so, just pressing gently on there, this will create the effect of a glass lens as, as the white will act like a reflection in the corner. So now we can start working on the metal areas. Now first of all the silver areas which includes the harness, the uh, the pipes on the backpack and also the vents here, the piping on the helmet and the detailing and also the main body of the bolter as well. We're painting all of these areas with a lead belcher. So when painting the metal areas you want to be exceptionally careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted as it can be quite difficult to remove any silver paint from non-metallic areas. So I'm just using my uh, small detail brush for this. I'll be painting over all of the metal areas in the same way. So once everywhere has been painted with the silver it's now time to do a wash and for this we'll be using Norn Oil. I'll be applying this wash over all of the metal areas ensuring that it sits into all of the recesses especially like here on the harness we can see all the individual grooves have been picked out by the wash like so. Once the wash is dry we can now start highlighting the edges of the silver areas with Runefang Steel. For this step I'll be using my detail brush again and I'll just be focusing on the raised sections of the silver areas like so and just picking them out just along the edges. Being very careful not to apply too much as we don't want to have too much of an overpowering highlight. Now that the silver areas are complete we can now move on to the bronze trim. Now this includes the trim around the shoulder pads as well and also any additional items such as the hilt on the blade there as well. So we're painting all of these areas with Rune Lord Brass. Now for this step I'm using my detail brush again. I'm just going to be very careful not to overspill onto the areas we've already painted and just get a nice and even base coverage over the bronze areas. With the base layer complete, we can now wash over the brass areas with Agrax Earthshade. So with this wash, we're not only applying some better shading in the recesses, but we're also darkening the colour slightly. Uh, this means that when we do the next highlight, it will show up a lot better. Now the final step for painting the bronze areas is to highlight everywhere with Sycorax Bronze. Now I'll be focusing this highlight on the edges of the bronze areas, such as the trim here, just running the brush along the edge, just to create a nice highlight. And here we have the completed Space Wolf. Now for this miniature I've opted not to paint the, the bumps on the left leg, 
However, if you wanted to, you could paint them in the same way that I painted the bronze trim. Now, if you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to check out my previous Horus Heresy videos in which I show you how to paint uh, other chapters such as the Sons of Horus, um, Word Bearers, and also the Ultramarines as well. If there are any other chapters you would like to see me cover, then be sure to uh, let me know in the comments and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. Additionally, you can support me in making my tutorials from as little as a dollar a month by heading over to my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. So, until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.